In the lessons leading up to this lesson, you've learned an awful lot about the physical properties of matter. Those are characteristics of matter that you can observe without changing the matter to a different type, without changing the way the atoms are bonded together to make fundamentally different matter than you had before. Those kinds of properties include things like size, shape, color, texture, density, conductivity, solubility, and the state that matter exists as. In this lesson, we're going to dive a little more deeply into that last concept, the states of matter, as we consider what happens when matter changes from one state to another. When you heat matter up or cool it down, and in this particular lesson, we're changing matter from a solid to a liquid and from a liquid to a solid. Now, that type of change is known as a physical change because we're only changing the physical properties of matter. We're not making new bonds or destroying bonds that will bond atoms together in a different way and fundamentally change matter to a different substance. This is sort of confusing because when you melt a substance to a liquid or freeze it to a solid, it almost seems like you're changing the substance from one type to another. You're going to see in this lesson why that's not the case. This is still a physical change to the physical properties of matter. To understand states of matter, once again, we need to go back to the kinetic theory of matter, which says that all particles of all matter are moving all the time. And the way that they're moving depends on the state that that matter is in and the temperature of the matter. So, for example, solid particles vibrate in a fixed place. That's what makes them a solid. If you heat up a solid, those particles will vibrate even faster, but they're still solid particles until they start sliding past one another. Particles of a liquid will slide past one another. And if you heat those particles up, they're going to slide faster. But if they're sliding past one another, they're still liquid particles. That's the kinetic theory of matter and how it applies to different states. But let's look at a model of what this looks like with a substance we're all familiar with, one of the most abundant substances on God's earth, water. And this is what water looks like when it's frozen to make ice, like the ice cubes you see on the slide. The water molecules get arranged in a crystal pattern, a lattice, and they're stuck to each other so that all they can do to move around is vibrate in a fixed place. They're highly organized and well arranged so that they are vibrating in a fixed place and not moving around from one place to another. That's what gives ice its properties. Now, notice on the thermometer on your screen that the temperature of this ice is cold. There's that critical temperature of zero degrees Celsius on the thermometer and we are below that temperature. What happens when I heat this ice up, but I'm still below that critical zero degrees Celsius temperature? Well, watch what happens. The particles are going to move differently than before, but they're not going to slide past one another. They're just going to move faster. This is what happens when you heat a solid up, but don't heat it beyond its critical melting temperature. It's still a solid. It's just the particles are moving more vigorously and more quickly. Well, what happens when we do heat ice beyond that critical temperature of zero degrees Celsius? The crystal structure that you see in the background that's holding these atoms together in a pattern is going to be broken apart and the water molecules are going to start sliding past one another as a liquid. That is what we call melting when the particles are no longer vibrating in a fixed place. They've gained so much energy they can't hold together in that rigid lattice anymore, and they start sliding past one another as a liquid. And this works with all substances that melt. When you melt iron by heating it to a very high temperature, the iron atoms can't hold in a crystal network anymore because they have so much energy, so they start sliding past one another. 
When you melt copper, it's the exact same thing. The particles start to slide past one another because they can't hold together as a crystal. Now, it's noteworthy that some substances can't do this. For example, wood. The particles that make up wood are arranged in such a way that when you try to heat them up to turn them into a liquid, the atoms just can't hold together in the arrangement that they're in and they break apart and chemically change before you can ever get them to turn into a liquid. Not all substances are able to form liquids the way that water can. However, many substances can when you heat them to a high enough temperature. Any substance on the periodic table of elements is able to form a solid, a liquid, or a gas. And this is what happens when they go from solid to liquid. Arranged particles as a crystal become particles that slide past one another. Now, let's just consider that critical temperature for water, it's zero degrees Celsius. Each substance has their own critical temperature where they either melt or freeze. The melting point is the unique temperature at which a substance that is a solid becomes a liquid, which particles stop vibrating in a fixed place and start sliding past one another as a liquid. It's just interesting to note that in all matter that God created in the universe, we can nail down a specific temperature at which that matter will turn from a solid to a liquid or from a liquid to a solid. That temperature is a very regular property of matter that can really be measured for any substance that melts. The same goes with freezing. The freezing point is actually the exact same number as the melting point. It's just the temperature at which a liquid becomes a solid. So it's the direction of the change of the state that determines whether you're talking about the melting point or the freezing point, even though it's the exact same number. Let's just consider what happens when something freezes. When something freezes, it's just the opposite of what we looked at before. The substance is above that critical zero degrees Celsius temperature in water's case. And when we cool water below zero degrees Celsius, suddenly the particles arrange themselves in this repeating crystal network pattern and they start vibrating in a fixed place. We changed a liquid, liquid water, to a solid. And because that's freezing, we call that zero degrees Celsius the freezing point, and it's the exact same temperature as the melting point. So that's what happens when matter freezes and melts. The particles are sliding past one another and then begin vibrating in a fixed place for freezing, or they're already vibrating in a fixed place and they start sliding past one another for melting. And it's important to note that the temperature of freezing or melting is a unique, measurable, constant temperature for any given substance under normal conditions.